Greetings, our friends from All Nations Breakthrough Church. This is your brother and friend, Pastor Richard Ishmael, a.k.a. Richie Righteous, and this is my wonderful wife, Sherry. And we are back. back. Yeah, yeah. Two times. Yeah, two times, and this has been the fastest we've ever been invited back to preach. <laughs> yes. So, Pastor Danny, my good friend, Pastor Daniel Kongu, it is so good to be back. Uh, we love you. We love your family. We love the entire yes. church. Yeah. We just love all of All Nations Breakthrough Church, and we're so glad that you were blessed by us and that we could have this opportunity once again to come into your home and fellowship with you and listen uh we've got some of church city watching here tonight too on facebook and youtube and all that city other stuff family. so church city if you're in the building too put a comment down let us know you're watching as well hey and uh do me a favor if you're on tonight text the link to a friend tell somebody to tune in because we've got something special we're going to talk about tonight uh you want to tell them what today is yes today is tonight is our anniversary yes we are celebrating 19 19 years, years of yes. marriage the lord has been good to us for 19 years he's yep. kept us four children yes. uh thriving ministry in new york and uh just loving jesus and loving each other yes at least I still love you. I love you too. Okay, good. So we're still in love. <laughs> and we're going to tell you how we were able to maintain that uh, 19 years of marriage tonight. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be good. If you're single, watch it. You're going to uh, be able to uh, pull a lot from what we talk about tonight. If you're married, it, we pray it helps your marriage. And last time we were here, we talked about the importance of the Holy Spirit yeah. and all the wonderful things we miss when we miss the Holy Spirit. And one thing is for sure, we could not make 19 years of marriage without the Holy spirit amen. Amen. amen and so tonight we're gonna pray and then we're gonna get into the word of the lord and so uh thank you for joining us tonight let's pray father i just thank you for your word yes, it is god. blessed and I thank you for everyone watching from wherever in the world they are watching. Yes. I thank you for my good friend, Pastor yes. Daniel Kongu and his yes. wonderful family yes. and, and the entire All Nations Breakthrough Church. I pray a special blessing on them that you would continue to give them the strength to do the mighty work they have been doing. Yes. I thank you for all Church City members and friends. Yes. I thank you for friends that are watching from everywhere. Now allow this word, O oh Holy Spirit, yes. to take root in the heart of the viewers. Yes. Lord, information is yes. nothing if it doesn't bring transformation yes. so we ask that you would allow this word to take root yes. so that it would be applied to bring fruit the yes. change that it was meant to bring yes. and the joy that it was meant to uh, uh, give us when we live out the yes. word of the Lord yes. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus yes. amen. amen hallelujah well you know it is important Sister Shane, you're going to help me preach tonight, right? Okay. Amen. So, uh, but it is important that we have strong marriages yeah. because society, the times we live in, if you look outside, there is a, a culture war and there's a lot of brokenness in our, our society, not right. just in the United States of America, but in the world. Mm -hmm. And I've always said that if you have broken people mm -hmm. that are married, you will produce a broken marriage. Mm -hmm. And a broken marriage will produce a broken home. Yeah. A broken home will produce, in essence, broken children. Right. Broken children will go out and produce broken schools and broken societies. Yeah. Yeah. Broken societies will produce broken uh, uh, nations yes. and, or states. Yes. Broken states will produce a broken yeah. nation. A broken nation will eventually produce a broken continent yeah, yeah. a broken continent will eventually lead to a broken world, world. Yeah. and so you know as we often say or the saying goes if you want to fix the broken world yeah. you've got to fix the broken continents mm. and if you want to fix the broken continents you got to break fix the broken nations mm. and if you want to fix the broken nations you got to fix the broken states, states. and societies yes. and if you want to fix the broken societies you got to fix the broken schools and mm. the broken children mm. and if you want to fix the broken children you got to fix the broken homes yes. and if you want to fix the broken homes you have to fix the broken marriages yeah. you see how that works yeah. that all of the world hinges on what happens in the home yeah. 
And so before God made anything else, before God made a government, before God made a, 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 a church, before mm -hmm. God made a, uh, even though the church is a representation of the mm -hmm. marriage, but mm -hmm. even before he made a, a government, before he made a police department, before he made an education system, before there was any institution that runs the world, before there were any of these systems, mm -hmm. the very first I guess you can call it system or institution right. God made was marriage. marriage yeah. Yeah. And all of these other systems are no good if the first system God ever made mm -hmm. is not functioning correctly. Yeah. You know, Sister Sherry, if I were to title this message tonight, and you know me and my titles, it would be, it's not about just marrying the right partner, mm. but it's about being the right person too. Mm. Amen. Amen. You know, oftentimes we want to marry or we, you know, you're single and you want the right partner. Yeah. Right. You want the right person in your life. And you should, you know, mm -hmm. because you don't want somebody to come in and ruin your life. Right. So you have several qualities you look for in a person mm -hmm. because having the right person in your life makes the, the, uh, the all of the difference. You ever heard the joke about complete and finish? No. You probably did. You forgot. Mm. So there's this man who was talking to this youngster and he said, a young man, do you know the difference between complete and finished? So the young man said, what are you talking about? Complete and finished are the same thing. If you completed something, you finished the thing. Mm -hmm. If you finished something, you've completed it. Mm. He said, no, sir. There's a difference between complete and finished. So the young man said, what are you talking about, old man? What, what is the difference between complete and finish? He said, let me tell you, son. If you marry the right woman, you will be complete. Mm. But if you marry the wrong woman, you are finished. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yes. And so, <laughs> and so you don't want to marry the wrong person because you're totally finished. Mm. You want to marry the right person so you can be complete. But the truth of the matter is, nobody really can complete you. And we're going to touch on that in right. a minute, right? You don't get married to be completed, right? right. But the, the point I'm trying to make is that if you allow the wrong person in your life, you can be totally finished. Right. So people want to marry the right person, right? Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that when you are single and you're dating, mm. you get all of the commercials. Right. But the problem is... You, you know, commercials have a way of being better than the actual product. Mm -hmm. So when you're single and you're looking, you know, young girls looking at the guys or the guys are looking at which girl should I get married? Mm -hmm. You're seeing the commercial. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that is the person has the best on yes. display. Yes. But the problem is the commercial oftentimes, <laughs> as you know and I do, is better than the actual product. Right. Have yeah. you ever seen a commercial on television and you like, I gotta have that. Yep. And you ordered it and it came to the house and, and after about three weeks you said, hey, wait a minute. Yep. This is not what the, com you see commercials are designed to look good. Mm. They're designed to show the best. Right. They don't show all the other stuff mm. that is possibly can come with this right. product. The commercials are designed to play on your emotions yes. to make you feel you need this. Mm. And so it is when you date, you know, sometimes people display the commercial, but then when the product comes into <laughs> your life, you've mm. got to live with <laughs> so to share you. I hope I'm a good product. <laughs> yes. I hope I'm a good product. Yeah. Right. But you've got to now live with the product and not the commercial. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the problem is the commercial is much better than the actual product. Mm -hmm. And unlike commercials on TV, there is no return <laughs> right. or money back like guaranteed. guaranteed. Once you get married to mm -hmm. that product, mm -hmm. they are there. <laughs> They no ain't going refund. no refunds. You can't ship them off the Amazon return. You can't send yes. them back. You are in it. Yes. So it is important yeah. to make sure you get married to the right person. Yeah. And you know, you know, a lot of people, you know, we, we have big demands, mm. right? Mm. Think about it, right? If you if 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 you were to get a job, right. you know, if you you know, if you were to go get a job today, right? Mm. You would, 
And I told you, what kind of job do you want? I gave you the option, mm. right? What would you say, Sister Sherry? Oh, man. A job that travels the world. Pain. You want a, a job that travels that the you, world? I want y'all to, to listen to this. Let, let's, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Lord. A job that will travel the world. Travel the world. Uh-huh. It's paying me big bucks. You want to get paid yep. to travel. Okay. Yes. All and right. to take my family with me. Oh, we get to go along. Yes. This is a job, by the way. Yes, job. Right. What else you want? Um, How about health benefits? Oh, yeah. What kind of health benefits? The best. The best. Even when you're not sick, they're taking care of yes. you. Yeah. What else you want? Um, what time do you want to work? Four hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Sherry, you don't want a job. Right. You don't want a job. You don't want a job. You want a vacation. <laughs> Here's the thing. All right, four days a week. Right. Four Here's days the thing, week. right? Imagine you, you, you're some, somebody walked up to you and said, hey, listen, I got a job for you. It's going to pay you over six figures. Yes. You get to pick your hours. Yes. You get to go on vacations as you please. Yes. You get to do all this dental plan, yes. health benefits, all of that. And you say, I want that job, right? Yes. It sounds like it's the right fit for, for you, me, right, right? right? Everybody wants the right fit for yep. them. But you know what? the job does before mm-hmm. they give you the job mm-hmm. they ask you for a i call it a resume <laughs> <laughs> you, right 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 you will know it as a resume yeah. they would ask you can you send in a resume why that job knows that we are bringing a lot and offering a lot to the table. Yep. We are offering you travel. Right. We're offering you a benefits, lot of money. Yeah, We're offering yeah. you benefits. Yeah. And we are fitting this bill. It cost us right. to be able to bring this to the yeah, table. Yeah. So we want a resume mm-hmm. to see if... What we're giving you, you are able to fulfill right. that end of the bargain because the job knows if we are bringing this much to the table, mm. you can possibly ruin it mm. if I let you in and you're the wrong person. Mm, Here's the thing about yeah. it. We were quick to say what kind of job we want. Yeah. But if I asked you, Sister Sherry, do you qualify right. to get paid vacations? And take your family everywhere Mm -hmm. and only work four hours a week. Mm -hmm. Many of us would probably say, I might not qualify. (laughs) Yes. But I think I deserve it. And the problem with most of us is we want a lot. It's true. But we don't bring a lot to the table. And so in marriages, what happens is we want a lot from the partner, Mm -hmm. but The question is not so much is this the right partner Mm. that you got to ask, but you must also ask, am I being the right partner Mm. for that partner? Am I the right person Mm. for this partner? Or am I actually going to ruin this person's life if I come in their life? Right. True. And so a lot of people like jobs, they do that. And I've seen people, people say they want, you know, they want to, when they get married, they want a husband who can articulate or a wife who can articulate like they're on a TED talk. Mm. They can speak so eloquently mm. and explain themselves. Mm. I want, I want a, a life partner who, when I get married to my wife or my husband, uh, they, they must be able to steward money like Dave Ramsey. Mm. Amen. Mm. So articulate like TED Talk. Steward money like Dave Ramsey. And be able to spiritually lead me like they are T.D. Jakes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or, or whoever your favorite. Or spiritually lead me like whoever your favorite preacher is. Right, right. right. And they they say, I want all these things. They must be able to, when I'm weak, be strong for me. Mm. Must be gracious and kind to Mm. me. And when when I make my mistakes, they must overlook them. And instead of being harsh on me on my mistake, learn how to pick me up Mm. when I fall Mm. and stand by me. And and, and in all of this process, they must still maintain looking great. Throughout life, yes. they must have proper teeth yes. and proper physique. Yes. Never, you know, a six-pack and all these demands. And, and must love me when I'm down. They must walk into the room and pick me up <laughs> when I'm down. 
And they want all that. Sometimes I think some of these people just want to marry. The only person who can do all that is Jesus. <laughs> yes. They want to marry Jesus. You know, you. <laughs> There's nobody that can this, fill that shoe. Let me tell you something. <laughs> these demands are so high, but yeah. here's the question. Mm. Are you equal to what you are demanding. Mm, right. I want a husband with a six pack and a great, well, are you taking care of yourself? Yeah. You know, yeah. don't make demands that you're not willing to meet. Yep, yep, yep. I want a man who could financially handle, but you buy shoes every week. Ooh, yeah. That was rough. I'm getting too past the Danny might be like, <laughs> You, you know, I, I want a man who could articulate, but you scream and you yell and you get angry and you shut down and you don't ever want to have a conversation. You get mad. Yeah. The demands sometimes that we have, we spend more time trying to find that in the person and not looking to see if we are like right. that. Right. I have learned that when I got married, and we used to do this in the early parts of our marriage a mm -hmm. lot. We were so quick to point out each other's flaws yeah. and try to fix each other. Mm -hmm. And I had to realize I didn't marry a project. Right. Do you understand right. what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah. Like I didn't marry somebody to spend my life fixing that person. Right. Right? I married somebody that is broken just like me mm. and needs the Lord Jesus and will at times uh, have issues. Yeah. And But I've learned that if I spend all my time in marriage trying to fix her and she spends all her time trying to fix me, mm. then all we're going to do is clash. Yeah. So what we had to learn to do is it's not about trying to make her the right partner. It's about trying to make me the right partner for her. Yeah. So what we did was we stopped. And we started working on ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Because you see, when two people that are, that are whole come together and they realize their flaws, mm. they realize they're not perfect, mm. they can say, I'm sorry. Yeah. They can confess when they are, 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 are wrong yeah. and, 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 and ask for forgiveness. Right. And, and, and they can take correction right. humbly. You know what happens? You now have a good marriage. Mm. You now have two people that can come together in humility mm. and do God's will. Amen. Now watch this. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about tonight? Here's, what I, here's my scripture for tonight. Amen. Am I preaching tonight, Sherry? Preaching. Amen. Yeah. My yeah. time's almost up already. Amen. Really? I know Pastor No. Well, I got about 10 more minutes. Pastor Danny's probably going to call me again. Hallelujah. Mm. I would love to preach for you anytime, <laughs> Pastor Danny. In the Bible, I wanted to show you something very simple mm. to back up what I'm saying. Okay. In the book of Genesis, the Bible, the book of Genesis will take forever to totally understand. Right. But every now and then I get these nuggets when I reread the story. Mm. So in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, this is how the Lord God made man. And it, it's real quick. Okay. It goes fast. It says, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living uh, being and now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east of Eden and there he put the man mm -hmm. so stop the first thing God did was created a man mm -hmm. not an incomplete man right. not a halfway man right. not an empty man mm -hmm. notice that he made the man and he put something of himself inside of the man mm -hmm. right and the man became living right. when the man got up he didn't he wasn't a man who uh, uh, was looking for something, he wasn't missing, uh, 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 right, right. You, you understand what I'm saying? He wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't a half man. Right. <laughs> you know, if I was in church city, I'd say like I want <laughs> right. to say, like this man, this man was a man born with intellect because right. immediately God took him and put him in the garden. This right. wasn't a man that was, was emotional and, and, and couldn't handle. This was a man that was born to lead and rule. Yeah. So God, God made a complete man when he made Adam. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah. And I'm going somewhere with this because look, so 
here's the other thing. The first relationship the man had when God made him was with God. Yeah. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So God made man, mm -hmm. breathed his breath, and the first relationship man ever had was with God. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody might be saying, oh, no, he wasn't. He was incomplete because God said it's not good for men to be mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. And people often mistake that word alone for lonely. Right. Lonely is a flaw. Mm -hmm. Alone just means all one. Right. All one means that you are by yourself. Right. Now, let me explain something to you. Do you know you can be in a room filled with people mm. and still be lonely? Yes. Do, do you see the difference? Yeah. But you can be all by yourself and not be lonely. You can be turned up. Yes. It could be you and Jesus. You don't need... <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you understand what yes. I'm saying? So loneliness has to do with something going on with the emotions, mm -hmm. where there's a lack of connection, right. where I can be in the room with people, but for some reason I'm not connected to them. Mm -hmm. And there are many people that are walking planet Earth, that are sitting in classrooms, that are sitting at jobs, that are sitting around thousands of people working in big cities, but they are super lonely. Mm -hmm. There is no something in them just cannot connect. They need something to break the oppression mm -hmm. that isolates them, that wants to make them think that that nobody cares or right. or that, that that you know break through the barrier of loneliness mm. but there's a difference between alone and all one and the truth is Adam was all one right. and God said from his point of view it is not good for man to be alone so I'll make him a helper suitable and what was the, the, the helper came along to ultimately achieve God's plan. And what was God's plan? For man to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Mm -hmm. So of course it wasn't good because God's plan was right. that man and woman were to replenish the earth and yes. produce families. Mm -hmm. And from families is to come the, the, the world that God had designed, a world that would worship him, a people yes. that would love him. Yeah. And if man was all one alone, he couldn't achieve that. Right. So God uh, said, I'm going to make him a woman. But mm -hmm. watch how God made the woman. Mm -hmm. Listen, it says in the same chapter, chapter 2, verse number 21. So the Lord God caused the man to fall us into a deep sleep. Why is that important? Mm -hmm. When God got ready to make the woman, yep. he did the same thing he did to the man. He ain't consult anybody. Yep. Yep. He didn't let... Imagine if Adam was awake and God said, <laughs> Adam, I'm about to make you this thing called woman. Mm. I'm about to make a wife for you. Adam would be like, well, can I have a say so? Right. Can I tell you what to do? Yeah. God did this to him. Go to sleep. And he put him totally asleep. And then the Bible says the Lord God caused the man to fall asleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place of his flesh. And then the Lord God made woman from the rib and he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. And the man said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Right. Watch this. Who was the first relationship the woman had when she was made? God. Not Adam, yep. but with God. Yes. So what's my point? When God made Adam, the first relationship he had mm. and was completed in mm. and was completely a whole man mm. was in God, yeah. knowing God. Yeah. When God made woman, she was completely in God. Yeah. God, in order for them to be married and work together, didn't bring two half people. Right. He brought two whole people yes. who were worked on yes. by him. Yes. And they came together and their first relationship was to please their creator. Yeah. And in working together, now they have, and watch this, and this is for another time. The marriage just wasn't for them to come together and be married, mm -hmm. but the marriage had a purpose. Yes. Most marriages are just living. Mm. <laughs> Most marriages don't realize that God has purpose for your marriage, mm -hmm. right? And here's the thing, Sister Sherry. Yeah. Oftentimes, uh, uh, whenever, when God created the world, 
and going back to what we were talking about last week, there are things that in relationships I have learned that sometimes you can put the wrong people or let me say it this way. You can put the, the, the person that is not skilled, but it's a good person in the wrong position in your life. Mm -hmm. And when, when somebody occupies your life mm -hmm. that, or a position in your life that they're a good person, but they don't necessarily should be occupying this position in my life. Right. It is as bad as if you put the wrong person in your life, period. Yeah. Do you understand yes, that? Yes. So sometimes you might have a great friend who is a, you know, funny guy, but that doesn't mean he needs to be your drummer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Great guy, wrong position. <laughs> do, yeah. do you follow that? Right? I'm trying to make that practical. Yeah. You, you might have a buddy who is a, man, he might be a tremendous basketball player, but you put him to be your accountant, you're going to lose all your money. <laughs> right. the, 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 the great people in the wrong position is just as you might as well put them, the wrong people in the wrong in your life. Yeah. And I've learned that it's the same with the Holy Spirit. That sometimes we put the wrong things or the wrong people in the place of the Holy Spirit. You say, what do you mean by that? Yeah. I've met many people who say, Pastor, I'm addicted to alcohol. Mm. Why? Well, I got these issues in my life that I don't know how to oh. break, and so I turn to a bottle. Mm. Yes. Well, you have given yes. the bottle. Right. You've put the wrong product in, the, in, in, in a place it doesn't belong. Yeah. The Holy Spirit yes. belongs in that yes. place. Do you follow? Yes. Yes. When it comes to marriage, mm. we put the wrong advisors. Mm. We put the wrong things mm. in the wrong place yes. together. Yeah. And so what can happen is when we go through problems, mm. we run to the wrong things. Right. Yep. The first thing that yeah. you should run to yes. whenever there is a problem, problem in your home is the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to say sorry. Mm. If you can't, l listen, yeah. it took the Holy Spirit <laughs> about six years to teach Sister Sherry how to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it took the Holy Spirit, but you know what? Yeah. When your life, when you, when you come together as two individuals with a relationship with God, completely whole in God. Because the truth is this, and I close with this. If you are looking for a spouse or somebody to complete you, mm. that's too much of a big job for the person, and that's too much you're giving to one person. Mm. What does that mean, Pastor Rich? Well, I expect you to make me happy. I'm 40 years old. If I, uh, well, I'm old, I'm more than, I'm, yeah. I'm over 40. Yeah, 40. I'm, yeah, I got a lot. <laughs> but you know, you start counting just. <laughs> you stop at a yeah, certain Yeah, you stop number. at a certain I'm 40, 40 <laughs> plus. That sounds good. Listen, if you couldn't be happy <laughs> by yourself <laughs> for 40 years. Right. How in the world are you going to come and do it for me? Right, right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. If, if you couldn't find the Lord and the joy of the Lord to complete you and make you happy, <laughs> how in the world is a man or a woman going to yeah. do that? Yeah. And the problem is too many of us are depending on broken people to yeah. complete us. Yes. No, 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 no. We want a lot from that person, mm. but we don't want to stop and work on ourselves. And what God did was God worked on them individually. Mm. And when he made them, mm. then he brought them together. Yeah. And you know, God don't make mistakes. Mm. So what he made was perfect. Yes. And what you ought to do is while you are trying to have the right partner in your life work 
on being the right partner for that someone too. Mm. And that's what we've been doing. Yeah. Amen, Sister Sherry? Oh, yeah. Any closing thing before I pray? I'm, I'm pretty much done. Amen. Yeah. Anything I said there? Uh, there's many things that you, you've said there. I'm sure the people would like to hear. Go ahead. Pastor Rich. <laughs> <laughs> there's many things that you said that mm. um, working on your, because it's our anniversary, and as I'm thinking about it, mm -hmm. I think we've had a long mm -hmm. run. Mm -hmm. And um, for anyone who's out there and who's thinking of getting married or anything like that, that is a great lesson because me as a woman who's very, um, strong and opinionated. Um, Very. I need to not, I've learned that I shouldn't always be trying to fix you or fix something that I don't like about you, but I need to fix myself because what I do is, and I, I'm going to start repeating what Church City knows already. This is when women ask me about marriages, I always said to them, when we sit and counsel marriages, I always say, one of my main things is going to church. I always say that. And they're like, that makes no sense. But it does make sense because it gives me an opportunity, even though my husband is my pastor, it gives me an opportunity to let the Lord convict me when I, because it's like, if you're wrong about something, it takes the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to convict you. Yeah, and when you, when you pick up the phone and call your friend who will tell you what you want to hear, that's not... You've then put the Holy Spirit in that, in that your position, friend your in friend the in the position. whole position of the Holy Spirit. Right. So on, I do not do that. I've always said, when you go and tell a friend or a mother or a mother-in-law or something what's going on in your relationship, after you and your hubby makes up and all everything is all good, what happens? You've just painted a bad picture of your spouse, a bad picture of your relationship. And these people are now looking at you in a certain way. What you need to do is take it to God first. Amen. But I love that uh, Holy Spirit. I wanted to say a, a point on that is because even if a problem occurs and you want to say, let me pray about it, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that you're praying about it, I can't say, Lord, help my husband to be a good husband. Help him to do this or whatever. And then I'm praying to God, but I am not being active in my prayer life. Amen. You understand what I'm Amen. saying? I am not being good. I'm just asking for him to be good. And a point I want to make before we close and we're going to pray for you is where I'm not saying you can't point out to somebody something that bothers you. Right. You can point it out, but it's the job of the Holy Spirit and that person to, to fix that. But that's the point. If both partners take the, the, the posture of when I am told or something is pointed out to me by the lord mm. or by me just seeing it right i'll work on me yeah and if you can fix you what an awesome spouse you would yeah. have amen yeah, and so somewhere around the 10th year we stopped working on each other and we started saying you know what this person loves me and they want the best yeah, for me yeah. So if I'm terrible at something, I, probably after 10 years, she's not lying. Yeah. Let me go yeah. fix this. Yeah. And I've been working on being the best husband. I've tried my best. So have I. And I hope I've done you justice, girl. Yeah, you have. And Amen. I hope I've done you justice. <laughs> you know how much I love you. I love you too. And we're going to pray with you. We're going to yeah. pray for your homes. And we just hope, you know, this This is really a conference. I this know, This I is know. a Q&A that can go on and on. But we, uh, we have limited time. Yeah. It's just a quick Wednesday night Bible study. Thank you, All Nations Breakthrough, for having us. And yeah. Pastor Danny, let's pray with you today. Pray with me. Say, Father God, Father God I, thank you I thank you for my life. For my life. I thank, you I thank you that you're my Lord, that you're my Lord and, my Savior. and my Savior. And Father, Father from, tonight, from tonight, I'm yours. I'm yours. In, Jesus In Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. Now let me pray. Father, every marriage, every person that is out there that is uh, blessed by this tonight, yes. every single, every married person, I pray that you would allow the little bit that we discussed tonight mm -hmm to rock the lives of those watching, yes. that they would be drawn closer and transformed forever by your power. Yes. 
I pray for marriages yes, and I pray for homes yes. and I pray that you would have your way in their house. Yes, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Well, Pastor Daniel, thank you, my good brother, for having us again. Yes. I love you, Pastor Danny yes. Kungu, my good. That's what this, this guy's yes. like one of my best friends I in the know. ministry. We met years ago and um, just you know, fell in love with your pastor, all nations. He's one of my good friends. And um, whenever he's ready to come take over my church <laughs> and you guys don't want him no more over there, <laughs> there's always a, a church waiting for you here in New York. We love Ooh. you and we love you all nations. Yes. God bless you Bye. tonight.